Well, howdy, y'all. Rude Drowned David, the happiness lady hero in the Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, happiness ladies. I even wrote a book about it. Choosing happiness, an uncommon way to find joy in your life. Y'all, it is cold outside, and this is why I am so bundled up. Oh, my goodness. This morning I woke up, it was negative one degrees. It's 26 degrees now. It's been 17 until like three hours ago. Some of the sun came out today and melted the snows, but I digress. This is hump day Wednesday, y'all. And what do I want to talk about today? Well, what would you choose to be if there was no judgments of how you should be? Like this reality tells you, you've got to be a good wife, good partner, uh, good husband, <laughs> Uh, parent, child, all the things, right? What if that had nothing to do with you? I like something very much that I've heard a few times in the Axis Consciousness world, you know? Um, and it's this. What if you were born on this planet and you were the only one here? Just you and nobody else. How would you be? There are no TV commercials to tell you what you're supposed to be. Mother Nature is not going to say, hey, you, um, we expecting you to show up like this. Because this is a beautiful part about Mother Nature. She has no point of view, right? So there wouldn't be that piece of um, here I'm in the world. What am I going to be? What am I going to do? How am gonna? How am I gonna create my life? So bear with me for a moment. Just lean into the energy of only you. Hmm. It's funny because I got this image, you know, of a hand basket, right? And there you are all. There you are, wrapped in swaddling clothes, and like, who swaddled you, right? How'd you get there? I mean, there you are. Did you get teleported or something? So my brain is going, how is this even possible? So let's just say, you know, there you are. You's born. You's delivered. There you are in the middle of the woods. I don't know. Maybe um, like Tarzan. <laughs> you, you, uh, the, the monkeys take you in to their family and, you know, you learn monkey language. And so in that case, you're going to behave like a monkey because that's what that reality is telling you to do. I know I went to a completely different place than I thought I was going to go. All right, let's go back to the original piece. Here you are born into this reality. You have no reference points. You have no TV. You have no parents. There's nobody impaling you with judgments of how you're supposed to show up. What kind of freedom could that give you? Well, let me just tell you something, y'all. I had a, an amazing conversation today with Charlie, with Mr. Charlie Verge. He referred to himself as Mr. Verge, according to an experience he had with one of his teachers that had said to him that he was never going to amount to anything because he wasn't taking life seriously. Evidently, he was in the class not necessarily the class clown, okay? He's kind of a private fella, or at least he was at that time. And he basically um, had one of those busting out moments. You know how it is. You're laughing so hard, you cannot control it. And um, he was laughing so joyfully that all the other kids in the class were laughing along with him. And this teacher grabs him by the ear and pulls his ear so hard and says, Mr. Charlie Verge is not going to amount to nothing because he don't take life serious. And what did that do? It made him laugh harder. Because here's the thing. He was just being himself. And a little bit more about my friend Charlie is that um, he pretty much wasn't regarded by his parents. Let's just say he was ignored. 
So there weren't any, any judgments impaled upon him. In this conversation we were having, I was like, well, dude, how fabulous is that for you that you didn't have someone impaling you with what you were supposed to be? Because that's not at all what it was like for me growing up. I mean, I was born, um, was born, I was born, <laughs> so funny from two Italian parents, one directly from Italy that when she got here did not speak English. She's fluent now in English. And a father whose parents um, came over on the boat, no joke, never learned English, opened up a deli and my father at a very young age, he was the one uh, translating for them they were in the Italian village or area of Birmingham, Alabama. So quite frankly, um, the people that came to them, most of them probably could also not speak English. So it worked out for them. But, you know, there was my father, bilingual, because he was born in the States. And, you know, they marry. I was born, number five out of six. The rest is history. But here's the thing. They had very interesting points of view about what we were supposed to be in this reality. Hey, there are two Italian parents um, from Italy or family from Italy, Roman Catholic. And so there was a lot imposed on me on how it was supposed to show up in the world. And would I have ever thought to ask, is that actually true for me? Well, no. As a child, you just assume your parents got it all figured out. They're going to take care of you. But you know, Here's my friend Charlie, where his parents didn't give him the time of day. They never imposed any judgments on him. And so he, so he was weird because he, he got to be whatever he wanted to be, regardless of what this reality said he should be. Me personally, had to be the good daughter, the good Catholic. Um, I don't know, all the stuff. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. So bear with me for a moment. Just do this. Ask for the walls and barriers to draw up because they will. You just ask your body, hey, walls and barriers down. And then ask to expand out to the eight corners of the room that you're in or car you're in, whatever. And with your next in breath, expand out even further. Like go beyond those walls and barriers. Filling up the town you live in. The next in breath, the country you live in and beyond and beyond until the world is inside of you, <laughs> including you. Oh, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Get as big as the universe. Oh, goodness gracious, are you the universe? Is that light? Light, light and heavy is a tool I've talked about before. It's, you know, it's like the, the tail wagging the dog kind of thing. If something feels right, then it excites you, it makes you exuberant, right? So truth, are you the universe? Hmm. And from that energy, space, and consciousness, y'all, what's truly possible? Who could you be? Could you actually change who you be in this 10 seconds? Why not? Hmm. If not this, then what? If I did not know this, then what else could be possible? Could I choose to be something completely different than what this reality expects? I'm going to put it in quotes, expects of me. Because, you know, just because they expect it does not mean that you have to choose that, y'all. Are you just this puny body or are you an infinite being? And with that... What are you capable of? What are you capable of? What else could you create and generate beyond this reality that even you had not considered before? And everybody in your universe, which you are, you be, would tell you you're crazy to even consider. I can't tell you how many times people have said I am off my gourd for choosing the things that I've chosen. I've done a lot of things in this reality, in this body. You know, I was 
goodness gracious me, I'm a Apple speech is spoken by where, where do I even begin? You know, I started out as a broadcasting and communications major. I came to Nashville. I was a lead singer of an all girl rock band. Um, to support that habit, I bartended. I taught dance to little children's tap jazz and ballet. Um, what else did I do? Or, um, yeah, I actually worked at another restaurant as well all to support this habit of wanting to be a singer, dancer, actress. And then, you know, I did that. We had a record deal. We toured, we did stuff. I opened up for really big acts. And, and then I was like, what else can I do with my broadcasting degree? Well, I don't know. Um, maybe I could work for a production company. So I did that for a while. And then I had my own production company. Um, and, and, and then that thing in India happened where I got shot by terrorists. Some of you may know about that. And then I was like, what do I really want to do? I was just trying to just earn a living. What actually makes me feel exuberant? What actually makes me the tail that wags the dog? What excites me? You know? And I remember this. I was, hmm, finally learned to walk again. It took me a couple of years. I was in a wheelchair. And Adidas heard my hard luck story and they gave me a pass to run the Boston Marathon. So I did that poorly. And I wrote my first book, Soul Survivor. Yeah. And, oh my gosh, it's a lot of real estate, y'all. Sorry. And it's not on audio. I would, I don't think I could read the, that many pages. I'd have to hire somebody. But I'd written that book and I'm you know, walking on the beach with a couple of girlfriends. Oh, and I actually wrote the second book about running the Boston for the love of running. And they were like, what are you going to do now? And I thought about it. I thought, what would I like to do now? I mean, I, I knew, I mean, it was the space where I had to recover. I had to learn how to walk again. <laughs> I wanted to run the coveted Boston. I've been training for it. I'd run nine other marathons to qualify y'all. Not easy. And I knew I'd never run as fast as I used to. I mean, my leg was shattered. And so when my girlfriend asked me that, I was like, oh my gosh, what do I want to do now? And I said, you know, I loved when I was performing and singing and it's not like I got to be this famous singer, da dancer, actress thing that I, you know, it was my fantasy for so many years. But if I could just be me and doesn't even care, I didn't care what style I was singing. I just thought, I just want to be performing again. That would get my happy on, right? And so I let it go. I put it out to the universe. What would it take? And... I reached out to a friend of mine, Todd Zilla. Knew him when I was a lead singer of the Paper Dolls. Because there I was performing in Murfreesboro. And there he was in the front row with his mohawk, faux hawk, whatever, doing this. And I was singing a, a Who song, I think. We did some covers as well. And uh, I reached out to him and I said, dude, I want to be singing again. Do you got anything going on? And he just happened to be putting a group together called Funk Hammer, and he needed a couple background vocalists. So he helped me put together a little demo of different styles, of stylings of singing, country, rock, R&B, jazz. And I started singing with Funk Hammer. From there, I started singing with Jones World. From there, I started singing with the Four Piece Band. And from there, well, it goes on and on. I ended up singing with a lot of other bands as a backup vocalist percussionist, electric violinist. And then I started writing songs again and I I have an album. Go to ruroks.com, R U R O C K S.com. And you know, it was just just for me, just for fun. It's that space of who would I be if I didn't take everyone else's considerations of what I should be into consideration. So that's what I would invite you to do. Like my friend, Charlie Burge. I mean, come on. 
He was willing to be himself. I was almost jealous of him. Like, nobody judged you growing up. And he goes, yeah, it's called abandonment. You know, <laughs> but um, who or what would you be if you didn't buy into this reality as to what or who you should show up as? And what could that create and generate for you in your future? Yeah. I did something for the fun of it that a lot of people were like, there ain't no way you're going to be able to do this, girl. There ain't no way. I'd done it before. I did it again. And I'm getting my band back together again. I'm hoping we get to perform sometime this year. Because when I'm on the stage, I am all of me, y'all. So what would it take for you to be all of you? Look at that. And share with me in the comments. I read them all. If there's something you would like for me to bring up on a hump day Wednesday, the happiness lady will take the challenge. I actually read all those comments. So, hey, you know what? Share if uh, you know someone that could have benefited from this conversation. And hit the subscribe button. That just lets you know when I go live. Thank y'all. For those of you watching now or in the future, I am so grateful for you. You have no idea. Thanks for playing. Until next time, y'all. Ciao, ciao for now. Mm. <laughs>